Hi guys, apologies for not having a video up in a while, but there's a very good reason for that and I'll go into it in a separate video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the wrong Cam Swift Micro. No, you heard me right, I said Micro, not Mini. There's a brand new camera come out from wrong Cam that's even smaller. So looking at the stats on the side, it just says it's a Micro Swift. We've got a voltage of 5 volts up to 36 volts. The sensor is IR blocked, which is good for me. And we have a lens of 2.1, which is fantastic because that's what I prefer to fly. Now, Runcam themselves say that this sensor should be 600 TV line. So it should actually have a very similar picture, if not the same picture, as their normal Swift and Swift Mini. Opening up the box, we're greeted with this uh, support card here. The actual URL is not actually running at the moment, but I should imagine they'll get that up soon. They're actually not even advertising this camera yet, so I guess this may be even a pre-production. Now, I have to admit, when I took that lid off and saw the size of this camera, I thought, oh my god, there's no way this can actually perform the same as a HS1177. I mean, look at the size of it. It's not much bigger than the size of my thumbnails. Now it's no surprise I am actually a big fan of Runcam because it's only a couple of months between every time they push out another new innovative product. And this camera really does go to show that Runcam are starting to really push the boundaries. Not only is this camera smaller but a lot lighter too. Looking at the rear we've got our usual 3 pin and 2 pin. The 3 pin for our voltage ground and video and the 2 pin for the ground and OSD. Now you don't actually get an OSD cable with this but I'm sure if you are also a Runcam fan you'll have a bunch of them lying around. Also on the rear of the camera, Runcam have actually placed a slab of plastic. This will help stop with shorts. However, as you can see on the sides and on the front, we can actually get access to the power distribution board and components. So you may want to cover that over with a little bit of silicone or something if you're going to be flying in wet conditions. As I mentioned at the start of the video, the camera comes with a 2.1mm lens. There's no mention if this will come with any other lens. Um, in fact, there's no mentions of any of this camera even existing on Runcam's website. So I can't be sure if it's going to come with 2.3 or 2.5 lenses also. The lens also does appear to be specific to the Swift Micro. And you probably won't be able to change these out with your current lenses on any of the normal Runcam Swifts or HS11 type cameras. So let's bring in a normal Runcam Swift and check it out for a size comparison. And as expected, we are actually smaller in every dimension possible. So let's measure it up against a Swift Mini. Again, the micro beats it in all dimensions again. Weighing the Runcam Micro on my own scales came up at about 5.7 grams total. And when I measure the camera, it turns out to be 19 by 19 by 19. Now you've got to admit, that's pretty small. So let's have a look at what else we get in the box and then get on to the footage. The only things I received are two cables, one with a 3-pin mini to 3-pin micro and a 3-pin mini to 3-pin mini. These are made out of a very nice silicone and a bunch of screws as well. So let's get this wired up to a video transmitter and see what we've got. I've simply used a cheap video transmitter that has a 5 volt out to go to the camera and I'm going to power it all from a 2 cell small 300 milliamp LiPo. Now you're going to have to bear in mind that the video footage you are seeing here isn't going to be as good as the quality that I was seeing in the goggles. Obviously the DVR compression really does start to lose some of the uh, image quality and then once I've rendered this and then got it up on YouTube, again we are losing quality. But again I was really surprised to see that the camera performs really really well. In fact it, to me it looked just like a normal HS1177 type camera. And if you've been wondering why I haven't put up videos lately, well, here's the reason why. I've got a bit of a sore leg, but we'll get to that another time. Now the camera reacts really well to changes in light, so going from the very bright clouds down to the ground, I'm not seeing uh, too much lag between the transition of the wide dynamic range. Now this is in completely stock settings, I haven't even set anything up, so I don't even know if any wide dynamic range or anything is on. So I'm completely covering the camera over to what should be pitch black, and then letting it overexpose with the normal outdoor lighting. Quickly switching between indoor condescent light and the outdoors really didn't have much effect to the camera. Easily flyable. 
At this point I had an idea to go back to the bench and whilst still recording on the DVR, unplug the micro and plug in a mini Swift and see if we could see any difference. Now things could look slightly different on the Swift Mini because it's actually using a 2.3 lens and the micro was using a 2.1 so we're slightly more zoomed in. Switching between the bright clouds and the ground had a very similar effect as the micro camera did. The only other very small camera that I have is a CMOS camera on my Emacs Babyhawk, so I thought I would have a little look and see what the differences are. And as expected, the Runcam Micro just completely blows it out of the water. But I suppose if I'm being honest, it wasn't really a fair test. But it was the best I could currently do with the resources that I have. Taking apart the micro is very easy as there's only two screws on the rear holding that plastic plate on. Measuring the PCB against the PCB of the Runcam Mini has them basically exactly the same. And when you look at the components between the two cameras of the micro and the Mini, you'll see that they're almost identical. The weight is also identical but between the two PCBs. So that is probably the reason why we are getting the same image quality. So to sum things up, I think this is actually a fantastic little camera. I think before I go out and fly, I will waterproof it slightly around those uh, components that you can see. Um, I will have to get this on a quad. Unfortunately, the mounting options at the moment are limited, but I'm sure I'll put this on a quad at some point. So could this be the new hype train? Will everyone be ditching their heavy 12, 13 gram HS11 type cameras and switch into these micro size? Only time will tell. Hopefully we'll get a lot of manufacturers that will now start to adjust their frames to take such cameras. And with new smaller flight controllers and video transmitters, there is a new trend on the block of running micro components. So I'm looking forward to the future of this. Let's see what happens. Thanks for watching guys. I'll be back soon.